Lee, we all try and understand what the world we're in is about, the particles, physics of matter and forces. Then one day we wake up and we find out that five times as much matter is now called dark matter. And the, the amount of matter that we know is everything is just a small percentage of even the matter. Forgetting the dark energy, which may be 70% of, of all the, the, uh, the, the energy density of the universe. So let's concentrate on dark matter. Good. It sounds like by definition we can't see it, right? Right. <laughs> At least it hasn't been seen yet except by its effects on gravity. Okay. And, and we, we see that in in galaxies as they revolve around each other and, and stars and within, within galaxies. And, and, within, galaxies. And, and let's separate out those two problems. Okay. There's the problem of dark matter within galaxies, which means that if we look at the orbits of the stars around a galaxy and we try to account for those orbits by using the matter that we see that makes up the galaxy, we find a mismatch. Then there's another similar question if we look at galaxies related to each other as they move around in clusters. Right, right. And because they go, the stars go so fast that, that it, with, with, the, with the amount of matter that we see, they should go so fast they fly off because there's not enough, seems to be not enough matter to hold them there, right? Well, there's enough matter, but they should be moving more slowly when they go further away. Right. And the fantastic discovery, which was made by Vera Rubin, is that as you move out from the center of the galaxy, the stars are moving at roughly, in a typical disk galaxy, the stars are moving at roughly the same speed. They don't go slower right, as, as, right. As, you, as you move away. Now, there are two kinds of explanations for this. One of them we've been saying is that there's matter which is not seen, okay, which accounts for the discrepancy. The other idea is that we're correct about the matter we see, but on the scale of galaxies or clusters of galaxies, Newton's law is wrong, and there's a different law of gravity which begins to be important in these contexts. And both ideas have been explored, and both are, each is successful partly in a domain, and each has difficulties in a domain. Well, certainly the, the latter is seems to be even more radical to say that Newton's law, which seems to be one of the most fundamentally constant things we, we know about gravity, is somehow, is somehow doesn't work uh, at, at larger distances. I agree it's more radical, and I think most of us think it's the less likely hypothesis. But there's a remarkable thing that Milgram in 1984 guessed what the new law would be in galaxies, and using this law there are remarkable predictions for what should be seen which work in not all but many galaxies. On the other hand, this idea is very difficult to reconcile with relativity, both special and general, although recently Begenstein has some work in that direction, and a few other people have work in that direction that, that has some hope. And it also seems that this idea is very difficult to make work for the dark matter problem on the scale of clusters of galaxies and larger. The dark matter hypothesis fits together very well with our knowledge of large-scale cosmology. It's an integral part of the standard model of cosmology. It fits very well with our understanding of how structure formed and the galaxies formed in galaxies. In those domains, it works very well. When it comes to explaining the velocity and the orbits of stars in individual galaxies, it gets messy. Mm. It doesn't do so well. So there's kind of complementary successes. What we need to clinch the matter is a real discovery of a dark matter particle. We have to know what it is, what, what it might be. There are some theories, weekly, there are, interacting. There are, different, there are different theories. There are natural candidates that come from supersymmetric theories. There's another kind of natural candidate called an axion. And these theories give the experimentalists predictions of what to look for, and a number of experiments have been mounted and continue to be mounted to look for these dark matter particles directly. And of course, if a discovery is made, that will be a great discovery. That will clinch the case. On the other hand, one can also look for variations from Newton's law in the solar system. There are some intriguing anomalies or hints. There's something called the pioneer effect. Yeah. That's um, with our sp the spacecraft that we sent. That... Yeah, which are not where they should be right. quite. Um, and so there also one needs a, a, 
a strong experimental discovery. And, and until we have a strong experimental discovery of either a dark matter particle or that Newton's law is really wrong on some scale, then we won't know which it is. Now, if we have a dark matter particle, it has to have certain characteristics. First of all, it, by definition, we can't see it. It has to interact very weakly right, with, with, with normal matter, yet it still has to have full gravitational powers. Sure. And when you say interact weakly, there is the weak nuclear interaction, and many of the ideas about dark matter particles have them. Oh. They don't give off light, they don't have electric charge, but they right. interact with the weak nuclear oh. interaction, and that's why they could be seen in detectors oh. built on Earth. Right. Either way this goes, we, we know there's a problem to be solved but by the r r revolution of galaxies and stars within, within galaxies. So there's a problem to be solved either by new particles or by modifications of the law of gravity. There doesn't seem to be any other possibility. It has to be seemingly one or the, t one or the other. Or both. <laughs> or both, sure. Okay, don't make our life even more complicated. Uh, either way that goes, will that be significant to theoretical physicists like yourself who are looking for, shall we say, an even grander goal to unify all the theories and particles in, 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 in bringing quantum gravity and, and, and uh, uh, bringing quantum mechanics and general relativity together in, in, in some ultimate thing. Is, is that data that, that will be helpful in, in furthering the ultimate goal? Sure. How, sure. how so? How would that work? Because we have a good argument that if it is dark matter, the dark matter particles are not ordinary matter that we see. That it says, you might have asked, why are they not just burnt out stars yeah. or neutron stars or black holes or rocks? Why aren't they just a lot of rocks from the formation of the galaxies that, right. you know, they're very cold, they don't give off much radiation. People thought about that. Oh, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah, early yeah, days, yeah. Especially and, brown stars and stuff. And there have been searches for those for all those things. Um, but there's a good argument from cosmology that puts a limit on how many ordinary particles there could have been that were created in the Big Bang. And the amount of dark matter we need, especially to solve the extragalactic problem, exceeds that. No. To solve the galactic problem, we might just squeeze through, is my understanding, but to solve the extragalactic problem is... is unless we're very wrong about the early universe and we have experimental checks on this aspect of the early universe, there's no way. So this means that if there are dark matter particles, all or most of them have to be a kind of matter that has not been discovered. They, they're not going to be made of protons and neutrons. And that means there are other fundamental types of matter, types of elementary particles, that we now don't know about. So it would be as fundamental a discovery as the discovery of the neutrino was, or the discovery of the neutron was. And that's fundamental. If you're trying to discover the pattern of the elementary particles and understand the principles behind the patterns that the elementary particles make, if you're missing some of them... Sure. Yeah. On the other hand, if, if gravity has to be accounted for in a different way, might that not affect uh, the Abs whole that will, ball of wax? That will affect the whole ball of wax. And it, so far, the attempts to do that look very unnatural. They complicate the theory. So one of the things that, that a good theorist, in my view, a theorist is suspicious of, is if incorporating a new idea in the physics we have complicates it, yeah. you should be <laughs> suspicious of it. We look for things that the insight simplifies things. So my guess is that if it is theory and not new matter, if it is an effect of the gravitational force, it's something very fundamental. So now I'm personally speculating it's non-locality. It's, it's something about the nature of space oh. being different from what we thought That's it was. That's serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, because the easy answers have been tried, have been played uh, with, uh. and they're ugly, they're messy. In my view, I'm expressing my opinion. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time staring at the ceiling, waking up in the middle of the night, thinking about these things, trying to make the modified gravity fit in with the rest of what we know about physics is so frustrating 
that even though it's the more romantic <laughs> idea, and the idea in some sense for theorists that's more exciting, yeah. I come back to thinking it's probably just some unknown form of matter. So no matter what happens though, dark matter really matters. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs>